Why did this throw do so much damage? Why is the opponent's meter draining in the air? How is Jax air throwing an opponent on the ground? Mortal Kombat 1 is filled with secrets, so today I'm sharing a few that I learned. And let's make a deal. If you learn anything new in this video, then leave a like down below. It helps the channel out a ton. And then after watching, subscribe if you enjoy fighting game guides like this one. And without any further ado, let's begin. Starting off with increased throw damage. By default, Sub-Zero's throw is 110, but earlier it did almost 180, so how is that possible? There's no cameo tomfoolery or anything like that. Instead, believe it or not, every single character in this game can get a damage buff to their throws. Okay, well, how do you do that? The answer is quite simple. You bait the opponent into doing an up block. Once that happens, your throw does way more damage. Once again, almost 180, which is 18% for anyone not aware. Which is crazy, because keep in mind, 20% is one fifth of the opponent's health. Or in other words, if you pull this off five times, that's a dead opponent. And in case you're curious, yes, this works for the cameo throw as well. It also gets a damage buff, which is a very big deal because some cameo throws do more damage than others, in case you're not aware. So for example, Jax can actually meter burn his throw to get even more damage. Look at that, 26%. Oh my goodness, for a throw. But don't worry, things get even better because Jax can actually spend two bars on his throw if you want to. And what's the damage? Oh my goodness, almost 35%. That's a full combo. That's a full full combos worth of damage from a throw. And you know what, just for fun, let's switch to Sonya because her default throw is the most damaging in the game. All right, so once again, I'm going to tell Reptile to up block and keep in mind, you can even throw them as they're exiting the up block. The timing is pretty generous, pretty big window. Once again, almost 18%, but now let's see what Sonya can do. Here's her default throw damage, all right, check it out. Boom, 14% all by herself. Now let's do the up block punish and oh my God, almost 23% for a single throw. That is wild. That's almost a Sub-Zero combo. That's almost a regular Sub-Zero combo. If anybody in the comments section already knew about this up block throw punish, please let me know how you figured it out because the game itself did not teach me. I learned it by watching a tournament match online. So if I never saw that tournament, then I would just go the rest of my life without knowing that up blocks can be punished with a throw for a severe damage increase. All right, but here's the million dollar question. How do you trick the opponent to up block? right? Because you can't just keep guessing. How do you guarantee they're going to go for the up block a lot of the time? Well, the simple answer is jumping in, right? Because a lot of players, once you jump in a few times, are just going to up block and then punish you on recovery when you land. And that's where the mix-up comes in, because instead of doing a jump in, you just land and throw them. I do believe that's the main scenario that Netherrealm was expecting, which is why they made this throw punish even a thing in the game. So once again, in my opinion, the best way to bait the up block is to just jump in a couple of times, and once the opponent and starts up blocking, don't attack. Just land and throw them instead. That's what the pro players call an empty jump, and in this game, it's great for baiting up block. However, that being said, some characters have overhead starters or overheads in their strings, and those can also be punished with an up block too. And as a result, you could use these overheads to try and bait the opponent's up block as well. It's a bit trickier, but could be done. It's gonna rely on a more competent opponent, but you could do it. And wait, oh my goodness, does this work with command grabs as well? I haven't even tested it. Let's switch to a grappler and find out real quick right now. Because even I don't know about this. I've only been testing regular throws and cameo throws, but what about command grabs? All right, here we go. Reiko time. This man is goaded with the most damaging command grab in the game, especially when combined with Darius. I'm not good at timing it, but it can be done. But now I'm telling Reptile to up block and what's the damage gonna be? Let's go. Oh my gosh, 30. 30%. That's crazy because Darius could combo after this, before, but now I'm trying it and it's way more difficult. I'm not sure if it's even possible anymore, but I do know the timing is way tougher. And in case you're wondering about his default command grab, it does around 160, which is less than a regular throw because somebody at Netherrealm is a coward that hates grapplers and I wish they would leave, honestly. All right, this next trick is a bit specific, but even so, I think it's very important to learn because plenty of characters in this game have attacks that only work on enemies who are airborne or in the middle of a juggle, like Jackson grab, for example. This attack will only hit the opponent if they're in the air. If they're on the ground, it's simply not going to work. The opponent has to be airborne. Makes sense, right? Well, get this. There's plenty of states where the opponent is actually not in the air, but the game treats them as such anyway. So take, for example, this situation. Hitting the opponent with a fully charged projectile from rain. The opponent is clearly not in the air, and yet even so, check this out. 
boom, getting thrown. That's right, in this game, a crumpled opponent is treated as airborne, so don't forget that. Another great example is Natara. She has this move where she flies upward, and as you can see, it will not hit opponents who are on the ground. They must be airborne, right? That all makes sense, but once again, there's exceptions. Look at Scorpion's overhead cameo attack. Leaves the opponent in a crumple state, and as a result, I can hit them with the anti-air attack, which might not seem like a big deal, but trust me, it is, because it leads to new combo root possibilities with this character. Yeah, it's a really, really big deal to understand this stuff. In Mortal Kombat 1, the opponent doesn't have to be airborne to hit them with an air-only special move. Instead, they can also be in a crumple state and some other situations as well. And this can be fantastic to learn for things like combos or even setups on the opponent, right? End a long combo with a crumple like this and then keep it going with an anti-air-only special move. Situations like that happen more often than you might think. So just keep that in mind. In Mortal Kombat 1, an airborne opponent is also a crumpled opponent. The game does not know the difference, and that's very important to understand. Alright, now this next tip is cameo specific, but even so, I think it's really important and also just really cool, because once again, the game did not teach me this. I learned it by watching pro players compete in tournaments. I'm sure that everyone watching is familiar with Serena, because not only is she everyone's go-to cameo when they first play the game, but she's also the most common cameo at the casual level, and as a result, you see her all the time, usually spamming this attack right here. However, believe it or not, one of Serena's best tools is actually her meter drain. It's an ambush attack, which means you can summon it whenever you want to, and it takes away the opponent's combo breaker. For some reason, our meters keep going back to the wrong thing. I told it to be default multiple times. Here we go. As you can see, the opponent's meter is draining. That takes away their combo breaker, because you need all three bars to do it. And as a result, this meter drain is very useful, but as you can see, it does not work when the opponent's in the air. Or does it? Yes, actually, you can find ways to drain the opponent's meter even when they're in the air, but here's the catch. The opponent still has to be really close to the ground. And as a result, your options are limited, but not as much as you thought before, right? Because me personally, I thought the opponent could be nowhere in the air at all. I thought they had to be on the ground and not even in a crumple state, but it turns out I was wrong. And if you want a great example, check this out. There's a reason I picked Natara. Mm, and then drain. Drain that meter, baby. The entire time, Reptile's meter was being sucked away, even though he was not on the ground. How cool is that? I was wondering why a tournament Natara player was using Serena, but then my eyes are opened. It turns out these two characters synergize quite well, and one great reason why is the meter drain ability at the end of every single combo. And now finally, there's one more tip I wanted to share because this, for me, was a game changer. It turns out if you hold down the cameo button and it's a summon attack, it will actually come out on frame 1 if you hold it down. Or in other words, you don't need to manually time it. Check this out. I was just holding down the cameo button the second I finished that string in the air, and the second my feet touched the floor, Sub-Zero came out and did his freeze. This information, in my opinion, is super important because it makes combos so much easier because you no longer need to manually time your cameo summon. Just hold down the button and they come out as soon as possible. And in case you're curious why that's a big deal for Rain, it's because he can do cool stuff like this where you freeze the opponent, boom, go for a setup, and now it's a really hard to block low overhead 50-50. This restand is great for combo extension, but it's also great for really tough to block setups. And the only reason I can do it consistently is because the game makes it so easy to summon your cameos on frame 1. And believe it or not, this works for special moves too, check this out. I'm gonna input it early, and it comes out the second I touch the floor. For some reason, Netherrealm allows this with special moves, but not regular attacks. You can't dial them in most of the time, but you can dial in special special moves and cameo attacks. Alright, and there you have it everyone, even more tricks to learn in Mortal Kombat 1. If you learned something new, please leave a like down below, it helps my channel out a ton. And then keep that combo going by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss any future videos. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs! And for even more good news, cover C of my comic is officially done, so order your copy today because this rare cover is only going to be sold on this Indiegogo campaign.
game. Or in other words, once the campaign is over, you will never be able to get access to this cover. It's never going to be sold again. In case you're brand new to this channel, my comic book, Top Tier, is inspired by the fighting games that I know and love. There's over 40 pages of action and concept art, and every purchase gives you six free trading cards. And if we make enough sales, you'll actually get even more stuff for free. So click my link down below and order your comic today. You're not going to regret it. It's awesome.